What's up, nerds, and welcome to the Nerd History Podcast, the newest addition to the Love Thy Nerd Podcast Network. The Nerd History Podcast exists to do what all nerds love the most, talk about the history of their favorite fandoms, explaining every detail from start to finish, not letting anyone get a word in edgewise till we've dumped our brain of every factoid and tidbit. Each episode, we will spotlight one particular nerd history event from that week and take a deep dive into the fandom, the lore, the nerdy facts. I'm Radio Matt, the Director of Content and Resources for Love Thy Nerd and the Station Manager for LTN Radio. And with me today and forevermore is my amazing bride, Adedra. Hi, I'm Daedra. <laughs> that was a really weird way to say my name. <laughs> well, when you've been married for nearly 20 years. It's hard to find new, interesting ways to say your name. <laughs> but at least it's an interesting name. Right? Daedra. I, not Daedra. I've just got Matt to work with. <laughs> not Deborah, that's right. You're stuck with the most bargain basement name. <laughs> Everywhere I go, there's at least three other people. <laughs> at least. Matt. At least, yeah. We are your nerd historians, and today on the show, we're going to be taking a look at the history of Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood, yeah. which celebrates its 56th anniversary Wow! as a show Wow! this week. Wow. So let's take a quick look at Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood, and we're going to give some of our initial thoughts. All right. In 1968, Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood premiered on PBS. Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood was a popular American children's television series that ran until 2001. That's a long time. Crazy. Created and hosted by Fred Rogers, who taught life lessons and values through songs, stories, and puppet characters. So what do you remember about Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood? I think... Well, like the whole thing. <laughs> All what are, okay, so what are no, some standouts? My, my favorite thing, my, like, because each episode had, you know, you did this and this and this and this. And my favorite thing that he did was when they, like, zoomed in and, and like, went out and did, like, a little story on the side, like, of what, what you were learning about. Like, if they were learning about crayons, you went and saw how they make crayons. Yeah, mm -hmm. and um, that that was like one of my favorites. And then I also really liked the puppet, right? The imagination. The little trolley would come. Yeah, behind uh huh. Him, uh huh. Yeah. And we'd follow the little trolley into What's the. What's the name of the? The land of make believe. Thank you. <laughs> or neighborhood of make believe. Depending yes. On how you think it's both? I think it's neighborhood. I think it is neighborhood. Yeah. But it's often referred to in pop culture as the land of make believe. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> That's where we got uh, yes. King Friday, uh -huh, uh -huh. Daniel Tiger, who would go on to have his own <gasps> yeah. very popular uh -huh. animated show. Uh -huh. um, most of the characters on that show, on Daniel Tiger, uh -huh. most of the characters are at least like parents. There is a loud car. <laughs> We're like parents in the show, right? They had their own kids like. King Friday had Prince Wednesday, right? Right. Was, uh -huh. was Prince Wednesday a puppet, too, before? I don't remember a prince. Yeah. Was it? I think Prince Wednesday was a puppet. Okay. Yeah. But who were the adults? There was the lady, um, man, I don't know their the name. The lady and the man. <laughs> uh, I remember the owl. Character. Oh, you mean the yeah. people? Yeah, who were the were, people? I forget about that. Yeah. There were people that would yeah, walk Yeah, there were the people that too. would walk around talking yeah. to the puppets. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure they're memorable enough. Lady Elaine? Lady Elaine. Lady Elaine uh -huh. is one of okay. them. That, that sounds familiar. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And Mr. McFeely would show up there, oh, too. yes. That was weird. Yes. Because he's in the uh -huh. real world. <laughs> and also in the make-believe world. Well... You know, the mail delivers everywhere. Is he real or not <laughs> is what I need to know. So how does Mr. Rogers differ from today's preschool shows? Now, we had Daniel Tiger. Daniel Tiger, I think, very I really faithful uh -huh. to at least the the um, feel mm -hmm. of Mr. Rogers. 
Like I had heard that that show existed when we had children, mm-hmm. but it wasn't until I sat down and like, okay, let's see what this is. that I realized, holy crap, this is Mr. Rogers. Right. Because he does the whole changing of the sweater right. and the shoes uh-huh. thing as he comes uh-huh. in, uh-huh. sings a modified sings. version of the song. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. I was... I was so excited. And they do the thing too where they like learn about something and mm-hmm. and but they it's more kid. Right. They have like a really. kid, like a real kid segment, right? Oh, that's right. Uh-huh. They usually do at the end yeah. have like a little Uh-huh. I forgot about that too. It's been yeah. a while. It's been a while since we've had anything. We other than need Bluey. to get Natalie. Has Natalie I don't think Natalie's She's ever seen never Daniel seen Daniel Tiger. That's it. Wow. Tomorrow. Oh, good luck. <laughs> <laughs> we bought we bought well we didn't buy we signed up for a trial of paramount plus uh for a week in order to get the super bowl yeah and then when i went to cancel it it's like hey don't go we'll give you a whole month and so like oh okay, okay. so now we have a whole month and we have discovered that there is a baby shark show and movie i have seen I... it now that Baby Shark's big movie <laughs> three times. I'm thankful that we only have it a month. In five days. In, yeah. In a month, we'll be able to be like, sorry, baby girl. It's all gone. All gone. Back to Bluey. <laughs> oh, darn. <laughs> but like, I would say Bluey has a similar feel, except a little bit more, I guess a little less sugar-coated. Let's put it that way. hmm Mm-hmm. Um, but beyond that, let's see. I'm trying to think of different shows that all of our children have watched. Tumbleweed, uh, I think, I has that same Tumbleweed. has that same kind of feel yeah. to it. Yeah, more uh-huh. the more like adventurous and weird kind of feel. Uh huh. Um, Paw Patrol. Paw Patrol, completely different show. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Paw Patrol is like a kid's version of Power Rangers today. Like it's just. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's not violence, but it feels like it's violence. You know, it feels like action. Here's what like... Mr. Rogers had that we don't get in kids' shows anymore. Kids' shows are all about we have to be so excited and keep them entertained for the entire episode. Yeah. And, you know, you don't have to. They can have a person just talking to them in a regular voice. Which I think... Is proven because that that formula mm-hmm. did go on to be popular in like Blues Clues. That's true. Which one of the That's most popular uh, kids mm-hmm. shows of our generation? I think mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, it was very interactive and slow moving. Mm-hmm. It wasn't. Now there were bright colors and stuff, but it wasn't pop 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 in your face. Yes, exciting music, consistent blah, 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 blah. action, yeah. consistent moving on camera. Yeah. Yeah. It's like when we talked about YouTube, we talked about Mr. Beast videos and how yeah. Yeah. they have to have something change every three seconds exactly. to keep you engaged. That's that's something we learned from childhood with the shows. <laughs> that's how they work now. I feel like, oh, it's terrible. The, um, the, um, the amount of uh, concentration. I don't know how to even say it. Like the... Uh, I don't know where you're going or I'd help you. <laughs> our attention span. There we our go. attention span, even as adults, is like like less than 30 seconds or something, mm-hmm. right? Like mm-hmm. super I'm honestly surprised I can get you to sit down and talk with me for an hour without <laughs> pulling out your phone. Cause I'm not even sure if you've noticed. I've started walking away. When we'll I'm have a com- we'll have phone? a com- we'll be having a conversation <laughs> and you will pick up your phone and go dead silent and I just leave. Oh. And I'm like we'll pick up this conversation at another time because you can't give me my my <laughs> wife is a you- zombie now. I've, I've walked it away at least 4 times and I don't think you've noticed yet. Wow. <laughs> well, now I will so thanks a lot. <laughs> I'm sorry to say that a lot of the time Ooh. my phone is just blowing up about children's ministry stuff at my church. <laughs> <laughs> Look, there's a lot on phones. I get that. I get that. So we're going to take a deeper dive into the history of Mr. Rogers here in a bit, but now it's time for a game. We're going to be excited. Yay! Yay! Because you've been a real bummer every I time. I hate we bring it. it up. I mean, I love it. I love the game. It's my favorite. 
Each week, uh, Matt kicks my butt <laughs> as we go head to head in a game to put our nerdy nostalgia knowledge to the test. We will ask each other five questions, all multiple choice. Dangerous will be harder than Matt's. And if we get the wrong answer, <laughs> we have to guess again. With each wrong answer, earning us an X. Fewest X's at the end of the round wins. I know that you haven't won one yet. Uh -huh. This is our eighth episode. Uh huh. But imagine how great of a moment it'll be. It's never going to happen. When you finally do <laughs> Uh, all right, so today, from our from one childhood legend to another, we're going to be ta taking on some Mickey Mouse trivia. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. Uh, in order to decide who goes I first. I didn't have Disney growing up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. In order to decide who goes first, I thought we'd do some rock, paper, scissors. Okay. You ready? So it's going to be one, two, three, shoot. Okay? Okay. Just one. No best of three. One, two, three, shoot. You win. I win. I win. All right. So I'm going to go first. Best to seven. <laughs> Best of seven. <laughs> first to 21. Okay. So you won. So I won. I, so I'm going to answer first. You're going to answer yeah, first. Yeah. So okay. Go ahead and ask. Okay. Mickey Mouse was originally created as a replacement for what other Walt Disney character? Mortimer the Misfit Monkey, Oswald the Lucky Rabbit, Hortus Horse Collar? Horus, I think. Hor Horus. Horace. Hor Horus. 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 Horus Horse. Close Horus. to horse. <laughs> Horus. <laughs> and Felix the Cat. Okay, I recognize Felix the Cat and Oswald the Lucky Rabbit. But I don't think Felix but the Cat. But then they wouldn't have been replaced, right? I don't think Fel I don't think Felix the Cat was Disney. Was it? I watched a lot of Felix the Cat stuff when I was a kid, and I'm just now <laughs> unlocking that memory. I have no idea who Felix the Cat he is. Had, <laughs> he had a he had a Mary Poppins bag. He had a magic bag that wow. had you pull out things. I had a video game <laughs> where I think you like pulled out like a boxing glove gun. You know, where he goes, and goes, uh -huh. punches the guy. Uh -huh. like, I'm remembering all this stuff about Felix the Cat all of a sudden. <laughs> I'm going to have to look up that video game. Um, I really think it's Oswald the Lucky Rabbit. I remember Oswald being in a um, one of the Disney video games. It might have been Kingdom Hearts or something like that, where they oh, went okay. to all the different one of the Kingdom okay. Hearts. I remember seeing him in the trailer in like 3D. So I'm going to say Oswald. Oh, Mickey Mouse was originally created as a replacement He's for right. Oswald the Lucky Rabbit. All oh, right, <laughs> I don't know if you heard the ding or not, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> ding ding. We usually hear it. Let me check. Let me make sure. That is, the, is it? Ding, is ding. it working? Ding. We'll just make our own. Then it'll be really annoying if, if it really is. Yeah, I don't know. <sighs> we usually hear it over the thing, so. I don't think it's playing. Uh, Oswald the Lucky Rabbit, a character Walt Disney had created along with Ub Erichs for Universal Studios. When Disney requested a larger budget for his popular Oswald series, Universal quickly fired him and hired other writers uh, and artists to work on the show, to which Universal owned all the rights. Disney learned an important lesson from the incident and made sure that in the future he owned the rights to all of his creations. Okay. Uh -huh. So this was before he was out on his own. Wow. He created Oswald and then lost the rights to him. Okay. That's, that's mean. That's messed up. That's messed up, yeah. Mickey right. made his first appearance in what short film? Plain Crazy? The Gallopin' Goncho, Steamboat Willie, The Barn Dance. Because here's the problem. I know Steamboat Willie is... I feel like that's the obvious It's got to be the answer. <laughs> but I also learned recently that he came out in two cartoons at about the same time. Steamboat Willie is the more famous, but I don't know if that's because it was the actual first... Or if it's because it was just the most famous one of the two. And I don't know what the other one was. But Steamboat Willie is what I'm going to guess. And I'm oh, wrong. I knew it. Damn no. it, <laughs> It's your fault. Why are you believing me? I never get the answer right. <laughs> Man, I don't know which one it is. 
Oh, I'm panicking now. <laughs> oh, gosh. I'm going to get three X's. Come on, X's. Here no, we go. We can I do it. I can't believe I knew that, <laughs> and I still did it. <sighs> okay, I don't think it's the barn dance. I think the barn dance is with that cow. <laughs> You remember the cow? Yes, I do. <laughs> oh, I brought her back for those Mickey Mouse uh -huh. clubhouse shows. Uh -huh. uh, I don't know what the galloping gaucho is. Galloping Playing crazy. Gaucho. Oh, thank oh, you. Oh, man. Mickey Mouse made his first appearance in the short film Playing Crazy on May 15th, 1928. In this five-minute short, Mickey is inspired to become an airplane pilot. He builds his own plane. Yada, yada, yada. Good gracious. It tells us the whole story. <sighs> Oh my Go goodness. Playing crazy. <laughs> Although audiences were only lukewarm to Mickey's first adventure, Walt Disney determined to make a star out of Mickey Mouse, pressed on and soon scored a big hit on November 18th, 1928 with Steamboat Willie. So see, that's what it was. Mm -hmm. Two around the same time, but one was more popular. Oh, man. May, so mad. November. Yeah. I do not Months deserve later. that X. Yeah, you do. Let's go. What color shoes does Mickey Mouse traditionally wear? What color are his shoes, Matthew? Are they red, blue, yellow, or black? They wouldn't be black because his skin is black. You don't have Mickey Mouse in there, do you? You're not allowed to look. I do not have anything Mickey Mouse. Yellow. There you Ding. go. Ding. Mickey Mouse traditionally wears yellow shoes, red shorts, and white gloves. In which short film did Mickey first wear his signature white gloves? Steamboat Willie, the Opry House, the Barnyard Battle, the Plowboy. So I know it wasn't in Steamboat Willie because I know that's part of the whole copyright thing right now where oh. Steamboat Willie's public domain. He cannot be wearing white gloves if you Cause then it's, create it because then ooh. it's the new one. <sighs> but I have no idea. Buh. Plowboy. Nope. <laughs> Barnyard Battle. Ooh. Dang it. Is it the Opry, Opry House? House. <laughs> Mickey Mouse first appeared in a signature white gloves on March 28, 1929 in The Opry House, a musical short in which he performs a series of vaudeville acts such as snake charming and belly dancing. Ooh. <sighs> Cartoons were weird back then, man. <laughs> Last one. What were Mickey's first spoken words? Look out! Hot dogs! <laughs> <laughs> Do not do voices, but that was pretty. That was pretty decent. Wanna dance? <laughs> that <laughs> sounded bad. <laughs> Golly G Willikers. <laughs> oh, Golly G Willikers. Hot dogs. <laughs> See, it, just gotta one up me. Is it hot dogs? Is that why is they that why sing that hot, hot dog, dog song hot dog, all the time? Oh, got diggity dog. <laughs> that seems like a cool Easter egg. Ah! Yes. That's that makes man, that makes me feel so much better about that song. <laughs> and how and, how, and it's it? carried over into every one of those kids shows <laughs> these days. I'm like, I don't understand the obsession with hot dogs. <laughs> now it makes sense. Mickey Mouse spoke his first words on May 23rd, 1929. Hot dogs in the <laughs> Carnival Kid, a short which featured Mickey selling hot dogs at a carnival. <laughs> Uh, in all of his previous appearances, Mickey would express himself vocally by whistling, laughing, crying, etc. But he never actually spoke. Wow. Huh. Wow. And so his first words were hot dogs. How many times did they have him say hot dogs if he was selling them, right? I feel like that was like the only words he said. Maybe. Through the whole thing. And he was just like saying hot dogs. Maybe, maybe. Yeah. All right. I have three X's. Wow. Okay. I'm going to get so many more than that. No idea. <laughs> Your first two questions are about <laughs> years. <laughs> my gosh what the heck oh it hurts Deidre in what year did Mickey Mouse make his first comic strip appearance 1930 1934 1942 or 1946 so we learned it came out in 1920 but that's cartoon eight. this is comic strip I know I'm like okay. how many times how long could that have gone on before they made a comic I'm gonna say 1930 Good hey, choice. Hey, hey, hey. I was going to say that too, because I feel like they were desperate for comic strips back then. Right, right. Yeah. Like they 
They comic to everything. <laughs> <laughs> Mickey Mouse made his first comic strip appearance in the New York Mirror on January 13th, 1930. The first few strips loosely based on playing crazy, Mickey's first short film were drawn by Oob Erix and written by Walt Disney himself. Ooh. I don't know if that's how you pronounce his name or not, but it's a weird name. It what year did the Mickey Mouse Club debut on TV? 1945, 1950, 1955, 1960. To be the original iteration. Right, right. Like, how white. old is the Mickey Mouse Club? Mm -hmm. The most famous Mickey Mouse Club is the one that had Justin Timberlake and Britney Spears and. Uh, I never watched them. All those, all those people. Brian Gosling, I think. A lot of those famous people now. Right. Were on it then. They were made by Disney. They were. Mm -hmm. Still true. Still true. A lot of people. Hannah Montana. Still being. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ugh. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> that came in like a wrecking ball. <laughs> what year <laughs> did the Mickey Mouse Club debut on TV? I'm going to, again, go with the earliest time and say 1945. 1945. <laughs> uh, see, now I want to do opposite. <laughs> Let's say 1950. 1950? Yes. <laughs> now you're Can stuck. I get a 55? <laughs> Oh, okay. <laughs> Mickey Mouse Club debuted on ABC TV October 3rd, 1955. It was a better day for children's television as Captain Kangaroo debuted that same day on CBS. How many X's do I have? Do I already have three? You have just the two. Just two. Just the two. And, and three, three more. Questions left. Oh, that's not good. But <laughs> which of the following is not a. F oh, man, I already gave names. Is not a former Mouseketeer. <laughs> <laughs> Britney Spears. <laughs> Christina Aguilera, Ricky Martin, or Justin Timberlake? Well, I know Justin and Brittany were. <laughs> Thank you. Um, that's what you get for talking. Uh -huh. uh, I'm going to say Ricky Martin. I feel like... Yeah. Good job. Ricky Martin was not a Mouseketeer. I almost said Christina Aguilera, but I backed off because I wasn't positive. Wow. Was on it. Uh, all joined the cast. All the other three joined the cast in 1993. Oh, they were even all on it together. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Wow. All right. Number nine. What honor did Mickey Mouse receive in 1934? A star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. His own entry in Encyclopedia Britannica. Rest in peace. Uh, League of <laughs> Nations medal. Or he led the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. Oh, wow. So this would have been six years after Mickey's creation. Yeah. yeah. So... I feel like that's too early for Hollywood star. Yeah. This is hard. This is a hard one. Britannica makes sense to me. But I don't think know what the heck after, the sorry, League of sense. Nations medal is. Um, But I could totally see him leading the Thanksgiving Day Parade. Mm -hmm. If it existed back in 1934, which it did, right? They Did they sell? They celebrated... They had balloons. A hundred years. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they've been around. Yeah. I'm going to say the Thanksgiving Day Parade. That would have probably been my guess, too. But and no, it's wrong. It's wrong. Encyclopedia. Okay. Wow. Okay, yeah. All right. 1934, the Encyclopedia Britannica gave Mickey Mouse his own encyclopedia entry. He did, however, receive many other honors as well that year. In 1935, the League of Nations awarded him a medal for being an ambassador of goodwill. Okay. He was also honored in the 1935 Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade, which was led by a 55-foot-high Mickey Mouse. And in 1978, in honor of his 50th anniversary, he became the first cartoon character to receive a star. Yeah. On See the how Hollywood much longer he so, had to wait for a star. Right. Yeah, yeah. There was no way it was going to be that. <laughs> but all, all four of those things did happen, though, and that's pretty yeah. cool. Yeah, that all is right. cool. Okay. So you're tied with me on X's, so we can still tie if you get this one right oh my gosh what is the name of mickey's sister <laughs> amelia bonnie carla or doreen i did not know mickey had a sister and i'm like I'm trying I... <laughs> to recall if we've seen her in any of the modern amelia <laughs> this is my sister bonnie <laughs> carla <laughs> doreen like, I really want to say Doreen because it's like an older name. It seems like a good... Uh, that was my favorite of the four that I just said in his voice. I know. I'm like going between all of them. 
<laughs> uh, let's let's do Doreen. Let's just go with the gut. Oh, gut is missed wrong. opportunity. Carla. Oh. Bonnie. Oh. It's Amelia. It's Amelia. <laughs> Come on. Mickey Mouse's sister is Amelia Field Mouse. She has two children, Mickey's nephews, Morty and Ferdy Field Mouse. <laughs> and where's her husband? <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, uh, you uh, you doubled your score at the Yay. end there. Yay, so. told you I was going to get so many. Three to six. <laughs> <laughs> Which is what it was last time. Is that what it was? Yes. Means? Yeah, I think so. And probably Forever. many other times. <laughs> well, that does it for our game. <laughs> oh, I'm choking over here. Hold on. Oh, Neil, yeah. You've got to do your Mickey laugh. <laughs> Um, <laughs> go like okay, Pluto, or something like that. <laughs> hey, come along, Pluto. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Gorsh. Oh my gosh. <laughs> uh, let's no, take a trip. Okay. I can't do Donald. I've tried my whole life <laughs> to figure out how to do the Donald Duck thing. <laughs> I cannot do it. And it makes me mad. I it is. A, it in is the a bathroom at night, <laughs> just staring into the mirror. <laughs> <laughs> so close, but so far. <laughs> it is. A, it is literally a point of personal shame. Aww. I have watched videos on how to do the Donald Duck voice, and I cannot make my mouth do what it needs to do. This is a part of me that I'm opening up to you for the first time. Here in front of everybody. <laughs> I am bearing my soul. <laughs> Let's take a trip back to 1968. Before we dive into the history of Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood, let's share some nerdy facts. All right. Every sweater that Mr. Rogers wore on the show was hand knit by his mother. Oh, mm -hmm. that's beautiful. so sweet. That's beautiful. Wow. <laughs> Were you trying to do Mickey Mouse again? <laughs> no. Oh, that's so sweet. <laughs> Hot dog. <laughs> it's just my regular voice, thank you. The red trolley that traveled through the neighborhood of Make Believe logged 5,000 miles annually. 5,000 miles a year. Wow. Spinning around on that thing. Wow. Mr. Rogers weighed himself every day and maintained a weight of exactly 143 pounds which he saw as a sign of love, 143 being numerical slang for I love you. One, four, three. Okay. Yeah. Isn't that cool. Interesting? Pretty interesting, if you ask me. So he like sought out the weight of 143? Yes, he tried to keep his weight as 143. Okay. Consistently. Wow. Yep. Yeah. Crazy. So there is plenty of story behind Mr. Rogers and no way that we can cover it all today. Mm -hmm. So I mean, we're gonna, it was on the air forever. We're going to hit a few <laughs> highlights. Okay. But um, for an even, even deeper dive into Fred Rogers, which uh, we'd, like to, we'd like to recommend, rather, the documentary, which <laughs> is Won't You Be My Neighbor? Uh, that is streaming on Netflix right now as a part of the normal Netflix plan, but you can also rent it on Prime for, I think, four bucks. It's a very good documentary. And also the docudrama A Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood, starring Tom Hanks uh, as Fred Rogers. You can rent that on Prime as well. Very good movie. <laughs> but let's learn about the man. Fred Rogers was an iconic American TV star, a wizard with puppets, a talented musician, and a kind-hearted minister mm -hmm. who poured his heart into Mr. Rogers' neighborhood from 1968 until he decided to hang up his cardigan in 2001. He was born March 20th, 1928 in Latrobe, Pennsylvania. Mr. Rogers was all about making kids feel loved, accepted, and understood right from their living rooms. Mm -hmm. His show was like a, a warm hug in TV form. 
Is that fair to say? Yeah. Is that a good uh -huh. analogy? Yeah. It was super chill. It was focused on making kids feel okay about all sorts of tricky stuff like dealing with feelings, getting along with others, even tough topics like divorce and loss. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Rogers had this amazing way of talking to kids as if they were in the room with him mm -hmm. and as if they were just as smart and deserving of respect mm -hmm. as grown-ups. He didn't talk down. He did not talk down mm -hmm. to them. He'd often say, I like you just the way you are, which pretty much sums up the whole vibe right. of the person. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, in the in the movie, in the Tom Hanks docudrama, one of the most powerful moments for me reflects that kind of feeling because that movie is about a writer who is supposed to be writing this like hero piece kind of thing on Fred Rogers, but he is an investigative journal investigative journalist. So he doesn't really want to even be doing this article and he's afraid he's going to uncover terrible things uh, about Fred Rogers that mm -hmm. are hidden, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. And so in one conversation they're having, I think they're on the, the subway or something. Uh, the writer guy says, uh, I just don't understand how you can, uh, care for someone who's so broken. And he just looks at him and he says, I don't think you're broken. And like, that's the, mm. that's the idea. It's like Fred Rogers understood that people are going to have problems and he understood that people are going to go through seasons, but that doesn't mean that they're less. It doesn't mean that they're broken. It doesn't mean that they're any less deserving of, of love or care. Mm -hmm. It's a beautiful thing. And in, in all honesty, it is a major ministry. Yeah, that absolutely. he put out into the world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so he passed away in February 27th, 2003, just two years after he stopped doing the show. Not mm -hmm. even two years, I don't think. Um, the way he talked about feelings and kindness and, and just being there for each other has inspired loads of people from teachers and filmmakers. Mm -hmm. um, and his message of love and acceptance keeps on touching hearts. Uh, he showed us how a little kindness can go a long way. Mm -hmm. uh, there are some key moments from the show that I want to talk about. Okay. So uh, the initial opening paragraph that you read was a little bit wrong because it did not debut on PBS. Okay. Mr. Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood is actually older than PBS. It aired on national educational television in ET, which was PBS before it was PBS. Oh, okay. So isn't that strange? He's older than the network. <laughs> than the network. PBS has been around wow. longer than we can remember. Uh-huh. This show predates it. Wow. <clears throat> he had barely been on the air, not even a full season, before he got tasked with a difficult situation the assassination of Robert F. Kennedy. Oh, wow. Fred Rogers produced a special primetime episode to help parents talk about the tragedy with their children. Huh. Wow. And this kind of set the tone for the show's approach to dealing with difficult topics. Wow. Uh, as in not shying away from them. Right. Like he, he's going to make it a point to talk about them. To so talk for, about it. Yeah. yeah. So, for example, in 1983... I'm sure you remember a key part of like the opening of the show after the cardigan and changing the shoes and the loafers and all that. He would walk over to the fish tank and feed the fish. Feed the fish. Uh huh. In 1983, the show's fish died. Oh. And instead of just simply replacing the fish and no one would know the wiser, Rogers actually addressed the topic of death in an honest and comforting way. I think I remember that episode yeah. of him like talking about like getting a fish out. Maybe. Maybe. I might totally just I don't know. Be not remembering that. But I do remember the fish though and him talking to them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean they still had fish after that. <laughs> yeah, 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 I know. But <clears throat> but yeah, he he helped children understand and cope with loss. He also tackled divorce, tackled disability in several ways he attacked uh, or tackled, not attacked. <laughs> tackled Racism, 
uh, in some different ways. Mm -hmm. Francis uh, Francois, maybe Francois Clemens joined the cast as Officer Clemens, becoming one of the first African American actors to have a recurring role on a children's television series. Wow. A memorable moment occurred in 1969 when Mr. Rogers and Officer Clemens cooled their feet together in a kiddie pool, symbolizing racial harmony during a time of racial segregation in the mm. United States. That's also something that it's hard to think of because we, we were born after most of that was dealt with. Right. Well after most of that was dealt with. But our parents... Uh, maybe my parents. I don't know if your parents, <laughs> <laughs> your parents might have been close. But uh, like my parents grew up in that time right when there were separate, separate everything things yeah and mm -hmm. so at that time white people and black people in most places weren't allowed to swim in the same pool mm. and it was kind of a a big like national news kind of thing at the time and mr rogers did a very bold and kind of controversial thing hmm. and filled up a kiddie pool and had them have both their feet in there to symbolize number one, this is wrong mm -hmm. and stupid. Mm -hmm. And number two, we don't have to go along with it. Mm. We don't have to buy into this idea that we need to be separate. Right. From each other, which yeah. I think is amazing. Right. That he had yeah. the, the cojones to do something <laughs> like that on a children's on a show. On kids' show. Yeah. On PBS. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, so this is very significant. Now, Fred Rogers was an accomplished musician, uh, as we mentioned. He has mm -hmm. composed over 200 songs for the show, including the opening song. Like all okay. of the music. Uh, he was also, yeah, he was behind all the music played on the program. Wow. Every single song that you heard, Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood, he wrote, he played. Wow. Isn't that nice? Like, I mean, I knew he played the piano. He, he would right, play right. the piano a lot yeah. on the show. Yeah. yeah. Like, this show was pretty much all him. Like, there weren't <laughs> massive teams of writers. And he would not want you saying that. But right. Anyway. He would hate all the credit. <laughs> Mr. Rogers uh, voiced many of the puppet characters in the neighborhood of Make Believe, mm -hmm. including, oh, we have a whole, whole list here. Ooh. King Friday, the uh, 13th. Did you know that? <laughs> I didn't know. King Friday, the 13th. Huh. Uh, Queen Sarah, Saturday, X the Owl, Henrietta Pussycat, and Daniel Striped Tiger. Which he voiced Daniel Tiger. He did voice Daniel Tiger. Okay. Wow. Each character was crafted to represent different facets of personality and to explore a wide range of human emotions and mm -hmm. experiences. Mm -hmm. One of the show's revolutionary aspects was how Mr. Rogers would look directly into the camera and speak to the viewers as if he was having a one-on-one -on -one conversation mm -hmm. with them. Mm -hmm. This approach helped children feel directly engaged and valued by Mr. Rogers, and this style of connection would be used to interact with children or with child viewers by many children's shows, even to this day. So we already talked about that. How right. Blues Clues used that format mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. uh, near perfection in a different way. Like Mr. Rogers would treat you like you were in the room, but you were coming along on a uh, you know a learning expedition or whatever, but. And Blues Clues is like you're playing a game. Right. But you you're were encouraged still here. to talk back. Right. You're still here. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That would be a difference too. You weren't really encouraged yeah. to talk back to <laughs> Mr. Rogers. He would ask you questions, but he wasn't like, oh, right. Yeah, right. Thanks. He wasn't <laughs> pretending like you were having a conversation. <laughs> and I guess another key difference was in Blues Clues, they would have some child actors respond. Oh, it would be yeah. There would be a pause mm -hmm. to give the children at home time to respond first. But then they'd have a little children voice right there. Yep. Behind the true. chair. <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> In the air? <laughs> Behind this bear? <laughs> no, you stupid. <laughs> Green shirted. Um, uh -huh. but anyway. <laughs> I loved Blue's Clues. I was too old to watch Blue's Clues when it first came out, and I still loved it. <laughs> that was, I mean, that was another thing. You didn't have anything to watch. 
We didn't have Netflix and all this kind of stuff back then. That's true. If it was on and it was the only thing on, I was watching Blue Screws. I mean. I don't care if I was 10. <laughs> I was watching. <laughs> That's how I was with Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. <laughs> I feel like I watched that th- in junior high and yeah. probably high school. <laughs> <laughs> so while some of what Mr. Rogers did could be called controversial simply because of the nature of certain topics at certain times in this uh, country's history. Mm-hmm. He is one, if not the only, well-known celebrity to have no scandals, Mm -hmm. no rumors of scandals, nothing scandalous about him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Except for maybe one thing. Oh. Go ahead. What were you going to say? I remember they were like doing the pranking show. Uh, It was like where they prank celebrities. You know, I don't know if it was punked. But it was. I don't know any other show that did that. Anyway, it might have been like Candid Camera or something. Oh, like maybe. Okay, but there anyway, was a celebrity Candid Camera. There were yeah. So they were trying to prank Mister Rogers, and he was like staying in a hotel, and they were trying to tell him that his TV didn't work, and that was the prank, you know, because everyone else would be like, well, upset and wanting a TV that worked, and he was just like, okay, that's fine. He was like the nicest. <laughs> person about it everything they tried to nudge him on he he was like the exact opposite if it was in (laughs) if it was shot like now they would just keep going they'd be like also we haven't washed any of the sheets (laughs) and our washer is broken so it's that or nothing um (laughs) your toilet doesn't flush (laughs) they would keep going now uh there are bed bugs for sure Uh, we got tested earlier this morning. Uh, also, we double charged you, and then our machine broke, and so we can't refund you. <laughs> Breakfast <laughs> is a soggy piece of bread. Oh, gosh. <laughs> You're like, sounds great. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay. I can eat out. <laughs> I brought my own sheets. <laughs> anyway, controversy, the one possible controversy. Oh, what's that? In recent years, mm-hmm. a GIF. That's right. GIF <laughs> has been going around the internet that appears to show Mr. Rogers smiling while giving two middle fingers to what appears to be either the camera or children sitting around him. Well, it's not real, I'm sure. This is a real clip. Okay. However, it actually comes from a completely innocent and wholesome context. Okay. This is a moment from an episode, and this is an older episode because it's black and white, where Mr. Rogers is playing and singing the song, Where is Thumpkin? Do you remember that? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And in that very wholesome show that, or very wholesome song that nobody does since the 90s, since the use of the middle finger really took off, Mm -hmm. (laughs) where each finger thumb pointer middle ring and pinky right. all uh-huh. get their own moment of spotlight uh-huh. where they're the only finger up okay <laughs> that so makes sense. in the sequence the song gets to the middle finger and it momentarily stands alone and that is the snapshot that became the gif so wow he's like smiling it kind of looks like he's being sassy because he's looking at the camera at first and then one goes up and then he's looking around and the other goes up <laughs> And you can he's see, singing a you song. You can see kids around too. Oh, yeah. But that's... without any sound and without any context, it looks like it's like, yeah, you and all you. That's what it seems like. <laughs> Poor guy. I'm pretty sure he was long dead before that gif started to go around. But, you know, side note here <laughs> our, you know, we have to tell our children, don't. You know, don't point with that finger. Don't use that finger. It means something bad. We're not going to tell you what it means, but it's bad. <laughs> don't use that finger when you point to stuff. Our, it's just like it makes it so much more. Why? And they want to know. Mm. And the other day, Johnny was like, I can't point. I can't put my middle finger up by itself, but can I put my middle toe up by itself? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, yeah, honey, you can do that. <laughs> <sighs> so he's sitting there on the couch just sticking his middle toe up. <laughs> what a goober. Yeah. 
Oh, well, now that we have taken a look back at some of Mr. Rogers' history, we wanted to know what you thought. So we asked the LTN Discord, lovethineair.com slash Discord. Mm -hmm. For those of you who watched Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood as a child, what segments were your favorite? And we had five options. How it's made, which these are clips from factories, farms, whatever. Neighborhood of make-believe, you know, puppets, which we talked about. Field trips, these were usually where they had a special guest and the guest would take them, take Mr. Rogers on camera to an actual place. I remember It's not that. a how it's made because yes. he wasn't ever there at the how it's made. Yes. But the field trips where he was there uh -huh. in the guided room. And then the heart to hearts, Mr. Rogers just talking directly to you about important lessons. Mm -hmm. Fifth option was just other. And we encourage you, if you choose chose other, tell us what your favorite part was. Right. Tell me what. <clears throat> so of all those... What do you think had the highest mm -hmm. amount of votes? Like I want to go, it's probably the heart to hearts. But then is that, <laughs> is that right? Is that, uh, do you want, you said you want to go. Let's Are do you going heart there? to hearts. Yeah. No, heart to hearts got 15%. Okay. <laughs> the field trips? Field trips was 19%. Was it the neighborhood? Twenty-six percent, oh but not gosh. the top. How it's made. Yeah, it literally, <laughs> the order that we posted it in is literally how people voted. How it's made was thirty percent. Wow. A uh, few people mentioned specifically the crayons one. That crayons how it's made segment. Yeah. Lives rent free in many people's heads. It's also the only one that I remember. It's also on Daniel Tiger. That's right. They did a whole episode uh -huh. where they actually went to a factory. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh, that was a little wonky. Right. <laughs> For children. Like, that's not how it really works. But then with the kids segment with the real kids, it yeah, they went to they an went actual to an, brand yeah. factory. I think it was beautiful. I think it was beautiful that they paid homage to that because that is the most well-known one. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, as a kid, that was, like, pretty cool to see. It was really neat to see. There wasn't a how it's made. Right. I, want, I, don't, I'm, I don't know. But it, was that the inspiration for that show? You know? I don't know. Unwrapped as well. Right? Like, you get the feeling. that Because I love Unwrapped. <laughs> I still remember for years checking every DVD store, waiting, waiting for them to start releasing Unwrapped on DVD. And when they came out with Discovery, not, was it Discovery? Discovery Plus? Well, That's what I it was. I think so. Yeah. Discovery Plus. Mm-hmm. Uh, that had all of the Food Network stuff, and I'm like, oh my gosh, they have unwrapped, babe. Babe, they have unwrapped. <laughs> we got it for, I think, it's six months or a year for free. Yeah, it was Verizon, like something for free. Yeah. And I watched every single every one of those, single. at least the ones hosted by Mark Summers. <laughs> right. Uh, about the Carlton other. came in and, and hosted the rest, and I'm like, okay, well, whatever. <laughs> You're not you're not the double dare guy. So <laughs> I loved you in Fresh Prince, but Mark Summers has a, a special place in my heart. <clears throat> so uh, the the other selection was eleven percent. Uh, only one person shared their other, uh, which was our friend Brother Mod, who said his favorite part was actually the opening song, the oh. "Won't You Be My Neighbor" segment as he comes into the house. Mm -hmm. He said it's how I learned to whistle. Oh, okay. Yes, you could learn to whistle with that song. <laughs> You'd whistle along with Mr. Rogers. <laughs> so what about you? What was your favorite part? I really like the how it's made stuff, but then I forgot about the field trip things, and I really like Field trips were too. good. They're, they're, the, they're the same vein. Yeah. A lot of times, you know, he would also, like, do a craft there kind of crafts. project. Yeah. I yeah. That. Like, they'd go see how an instrument was made and then he'd show you how to make one like out of rubber bands in a box, mm -hmm. you know? He and would all really he would cool. often have just toys yeah. as an object lesson uh -huh. too. I'm remembering like the wooden train tracks kind and of thing being Yeah, and used. he would like play with them and Yeah. Yeah, talk about them. Mm -hmm. As he was talking about whatever lesson he was ramping up to that day. It was uh -huh. really an early thing. Yeah. It was a good dang show. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately our kids would never sit down to watch it. I don't think, <laughs> I don't think anybody's because kids these days. We just make them think TV <clears throat> is just for complete and utter entertainment 24-7. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Just go, 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 go. And yell. Everything's got to be yelling. Gosh. Don't get me started. <laughs> Every YouTuber that they watch <gasps> talks at a level 10 
nonstop, no matter what they're saying. Yep. I don't know how they're not constantly sucking on lozenges <laughs> from losing their voice. They probably are. <laughs> yeah, I would say the, the How It's Made and the Field Trips are probably my favorite, too. I yeah. did like the neighborhood of make-believe, but... Like even as a kid, that felt like a kiddie thing. You know, I agree with it that. felt it felt. The thing I didn't like about the make believe one was that it was a continuous story, and so like if you hadn't watched a previous week, it was kind of like you were jumping into the middle of it. Was it really? Yeah, it was. Yeah, that. it was like long arcs between episodes. With things, because it was like very short, like what, like five, six minutes with these. If puppets. that, yeah, I mean the it episodes were short. Wasn't long, but I remember like being lost a lot of the time because it was like a continued on. Maybe that's why I didn't care for it. Thing. Yeah. Maybe I just didn't realize that that's what I did. <laughs> yeah. That would have been hard. That would have been hard back then mm -hmm. with no way to catch up on it. And I don't even know, like, at the time we were seeing the episodes, they would have been reruns sometimes. No, two, he no. went all the way to 2001. 2001. I, don't think, I, don't, yeah. I mean, I'm sure they played plenty of reruns. Right. I, but I'm if those are sure played out of order, then, you know. I mean, some of his seasons were fairly short with the number of episodes, but I think they played them every day. Hmm. So I'm sure there were plenty of reruns. But, yeah, if they were played out of order or you just watch them randomly... You're gonna miss it, right? That's interesting. I did not. I did not. Yeah, I'm pick pretty up sure. On that. I'm pretty sure. Okay. I remember being like, well, I don't, I don't know what storyline this is. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's wrap it up. All right. What do you think about Mister Rogers' Neighborhood? What was your favorite part of the show? We want to know. Tell us on the socials at Nerd History LTN. Subscribe to the Nerd History Podcast via the Love Thy Nerd YouTube channel or on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, etc. And find us on lovethynerd.com slash nerdhistorypod. And we also have our daily Today in Nerd History short and article that comes out every day at lovethynerd.com slash nerdhistory with photos and nerdy facts. <laughs> Good gracious. Do we have one? <laughs> We have just received a message from the nerd future. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> We've just received an ad for a reboot of Ooh. Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood from the year 2068. Wow. Oh my gosh. <laughs> that is the creepiest, creepiest thing ever. Uh, wow. Look at that. Look at that thing. In the year 2068, a century after its original premiere, the iconic Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood is reborn for a new era of viewers, introducing Mr. Rogers' Galactic Neighborhood, <laughs> where the spirit of Fred Rogers is embodied in an advanced, empathetic, robotic host, Robo Rogers. <laughs> The groundbreaking reboot takes children on an extraordinary journey beyond Earth, fostering friendships with alien neighbors from distant worlds. With state-of-the-art holographic visuals and interactive storytelling, Robo Rogers invites young explorers to navigate the stars and discover the importance of kindness, understanding, and respect in a vast multicultural galaxy. <laughs> <laughs> each episode is a new adventure where Earth's children and alien friends learn from each other, sharing cultures, languages, and the universal values that unite all beings. Mr. Rogers' galactic neighborhood is more than just a show. It's a portal to new worlds filled with diverse life forms and endless possibilities for learning and growth. Mr. Rogers' galactic neighborhood, premiering February 19th, 2068. The neighborhood just got a whole lot bigger. <laughs> Gosh, that is crazy. <laughs> we will be back <laughs> next week as we travel back in time to another event to celebrate in nerd history. Once again, I'm Radio Matt. And I'm Deidre. And remember that in the past, present, and future, Jesus loves you, nerds.